I left uni and I was just working for my dad, like painting and decorating, just trying to figure out what to do. And like, in the meantime, like you buy like the Guardian and has all the media jobs in the back on a Monday. And uh, I was just applying for jobs, like running jobs in London or this job here. And, and I was just like, just some, still just some young guy from a village who didn't really know anyone other than yeah. the contacts I'd made at uni. And all the great time I'd had it at uni. And then, um, so I was applying for these jobs I didn't really want, wasn't ever going to get, because such as, it was like, there's so much nepotism in that scene anyway. All the, um, I just uh, was looking for something to do, you know. And I guess, like, my stepdad was, like, an entrepreneur. He started his own business. And I kind of was always a little bit, in, you know, influenced by that him and my mum started their own business I was like always had that in the back of my mind so that was like quite a positive influence from from that side of things and um yeah so I just thought maybe that's that's the hook you know that's my hook for getting into the scene because there was already like a couple of mountain bike films that I was aware of and I just didn't feel like being a from the UK we could straight up just smash out like a like a quality mountain bike film that could stand up against the stuff that I was aware of. Mm. A lot of it I hadn't even seen because I didn't have like a big budget for going out and buying like <laughs> latest films or yeah. whatever. Um, it was Chainsaw, wasn't there? Yeah. It was, yeah. That had come out and then there was like... The, packaging the, that. I like yeah, the packaging great that. branding, but yeah. I, hadn't, I hadn't even seen it, Yeah, you know, before I started Sprung. And then... Wow, that's sick. Yeah, so, so I, but I had seen like the UK stuff. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't think we could quite stack up straight away against that. I'd seen Mud Cows, yeah. which I loved. Yeah, I really loved, loved that. Mud Cows felt like you were actually there, didn't it? And then, um, uh, and then there was the MBUK stuff, wasn't there? So you had like tricks and stunts, dirt, and chain spotting. Yeah, chain spotting. So, um, and I didn't feel like we could really just go straight out and do that, or me personally. So, so the the sprung the the video magazine element was like kind of gave us our angle yeah so you could sort of take the pressure off a bit and i thought right we'll do like four a year and make it like less good in some ways you know what i mean like and just go out and do our Ooh. own thing you know so like the first so <coughs> if i start from the start i i phoned up milan who was my partner the co-founder of sprung and he was my um one of my best mates from plymouth um, college I've never uh, met him but I know he's Milan Spazic right yeah Milan, Biker as well yeah yeah he's Milan right. Spazic yeah and he um, he came up to me at college and said oh you've got a mountain bike I was thinking of getting one and like I was thinking of getting this KHS or something um, do you want to go riding yeah you know like definitely like just he used to see me ride into college on my my Kona and then we were just mates from there, really. You know, we used to go riding. He had a car. He was, like, a lot older. He was, like, a mature student. Came from um, Serbia. And, um, yeah, just had this plan, this goal, just to get to America, I think. <laughs> he ended up there. <laughs> like, he achieved his dream. Rad. Um, still now, yeah. Yeah. Works in film? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. He still, like, dabbles in film and stuff. Yeah. But, um, he's got all, like, a... Became like a red owner and like does all like commercial stuff mm. and things like that. So, had you already started buying your own equipment? Like, when do you start? So, well, the camera that? thing was like that comes off like the next bit of the story, really. You know, I mess phoned up Milan. I said, What do you think? He's like, Yeah, yeah, we'll give it a go. Probably like a bit skeptical, not maybe not quite sure how serious I was, but we'd spent like a year and a half like riding like most weekends, like hanging out, and we'd seen together the scene change and grow into like XE, we were like full on XE. So like, oh, I'm gonna take my bar ends off and, and uh, put some riser bars on. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that's all right, isn't it? And then, oh yeah, put some you know, short stem, oh yeah, that's all right. <laughs> you know, oh, chain device, what's that? You know, so <laughs> yeah. and then all of a sudden he turns up at my house, he's like, oh, I've just bought this. And he turns up with a brand new like Kona full sus thing. Wow, how'd you get that? Oh my God, like, you know, just like the wildest thing. And then, um, so we saw the team progress, yeah, like together. And then we'd always talk about doing something like, because we were on the same course, you know, doing the video thing. And uh, um, so we 
we could see where it was going. And then for me to call him up sort of six, six months after, well, four, four or five months after we left um, college, after the course ended, and for me to say that, he's probably like, oh, yeah, yeah, we, w we should do that. You should do that thing we've been talking about the whole time mm. and how are we going to do it? So I went to my mum, convinced her to lend me some money. So she had a, took out a loan, 1,600 quid loan, to buy me this camera that I'd seen and trade it <laughs> in Bristol, which is like the, you know, Vlog It magazine. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> you know, like the free ads, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, paper yeah. thing. Friday ad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Call them up. So I'd seen this, it. seen this camera in there, yeah, Sony VX9000. And I drove over, looked at it, and yeah, and paid this guy cash for this camera. And uh, and that was it, really. You know, and I said to Milan, look, I bought this camera, and it's like the latest Sony DV thing, and uh, it's the VX9000. It's better than the VX1000, uh, which all the skaters use. Mm. Yeah. Um, which is now like the iconic camera. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. You, you know. Um, and he says... Oh, wow, yeah, let's do it then. You know, serious, right? And then he went down the local, like, you know, like, pawn shop, if you like, down in Plymouth. And there was one, a similar one, but it was the DSR 200. And it was, like, a grand more. And it was, like, exactly the same as my camera, but the pro version, the, D yeah. the DV cam version. So mine was DV, and Sony did what was called DV cam, which is... 25 megabits per second whereas the dv is 20 megabits per second data rate which is dealing with like minute data rates compared to like what you got here but that's the diff that was like um the difference between those that's real, yeah, geek yeah, real yeah. geeky but yeah his was like this one was like all black mine was like gray and his was all black and had like xlr imports for proper like audio in so. yeah yeah and anyway he like bought it and so we had amazingly we had like the same looking cameras they were all identical cameras, really, but um, and it was like really good for like what we wanted to do. You know, you could like it was designed to be a shoulder mount right. version of the VX thousand, but as a bigger sensor, so it let a bit more light in. And then um, or was it the same size sensor? I can't remember. But um, so they've got gnarly zooms, haven't they? Is that right? Am I? Yeah, you had like yeah. a really good trigger zoom, like on a on a grip that you'd hand like this and do yeah, like yeah. ENG style. But what we did, we like wedged it in our like a uh, rifle butt, and then used the trigger, like used the fig, like the zoom finger there, and then pulled it in, and then you could look through the eyepiece yeah. <clears throat> to keep it real steady, and it just happened to be the perfect camera for pan and zoom filming. Right, you wow. could just like and like yeah, really fast zoom, and I think maybe had a little bit more zoom range than the VX thousand, but rather than going like that with the whole camera to your eye, it's still I mean VX thousand format, it's still great. You, but you just had this like rifle way of filming, which just was, was um, I don't know. I guess guess it helped with the branding a little bit when people saw us out and about. And I remember the first race we went to Nat Mar Quarry, and I was I'd be real self conscious of the, having such a big camera, <laughs> you know. And I had this like brown bag that my friend gave me. <laughs> I pulled it out it was like this like real official like <laughs> brown bag. And I pulled it out. And <laughs> But Here's like, oh, the BBC. Yeah, and then like, <laughs> people like I remember pulled out, and the f first thing I heard was like, "Oh, you got a big enough camera, mate." <laughs> <laughs> Just some guy like, "Why would you even say that?" And then like, we ride so as well. Just, would you go and do both? Ride? Or, yeah. Or no, were you there just filming? No, like? I never separate. Never did that. Milan right. used to Milan had a little bit more funds than I did, and he had like downhill bikes, and uh, and uh, yeah. You know, he could buy the camera and all that stuff. So he raced downhill okay. and, like, he influenced, like... So I think a, a lot of people lot make of that choice, did. it seems like. Filmers yeah. go, yeah. right, I'm not going to be a pro rider. Yeah. I'm going to go down the yeah. filming route. But you just went... I just went full, like, one all my money almost. was going on the filming and that was it. I had my orange P7, which I had the last year of uni. I used to work at Halford, so I spent all my money on that. And then that converted that into, like, this downhill rig. You know, slams. <laughs> just like, literally yeah. just raked out the head angle. Well, not even. I had like 80 <laughs> mil travel. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, Rock shock duties. I've still got it all, you know. And then, yeah, I just used to do that. And I got into, I got into more like dirt jumping. Yeah. So I went that way. I used to dirt jump. And then I got a BMX, like one of the sponsors. I swapped to add on Sprung for a BMX. Right. 
so I just got into dirt jumping in, in the village, you know, so I didn't have to drive. I could just, just it's almost like skating, dig and ride. Yeah. yeah. Like really, you know, it's like village skating. Yeah. It's like, like, woodland, like dirt jumping I mean, like, is like village skating. The village yes. idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> ad break. <laughs> nice. Did you enjoy this clip? If so, please like and subscribe. The full episode is available by hitting one of the links on the screen right now or type The Ride Companion into your favourite podcast app. We've even put links in the show description for you. Cheers!